Queen's Hope by E.K. Johnston wraps up the so-called Queen's Trilogy and does so in a fascinating manner. We're reunited with Padme, Sabe, and the other handmaidens, and even get to spend a little time with Anakin. As we move closer to the events of Revenge of the Sith, it's incredibly interesting to see where all of Padme's relationships are in terms of their stability, and this book certainly gives plenty of insight into that. Hey everyone, my name is Emma Park. I'm a content creator here at Utini, and today I'm going to be recapping What Happened in Queen's Hope by E.K. Johnston, courtesy of the roundtable master himself, Charles Hankel. Be warned, there are full spoilers ahead, and they are major ones at that, so if you haven't read it yet, do yourself a favor and come back when you're done. You don't want the finale of this trilogy to be spoiled for you. So without further ado, let's dive straight into it. Shortly after the Battle of Geonosis and the start of the Clone Wars, Padme Amidala recuperates in secret on her home planet of Naboo. Despite recent galaxy-wide turmoil, she anchors herself to one surprising, yet undeniable truth, her love for Anakin Skywalker. As Padme and Anakin prepare for their secret wedding ceremony, Padme wrestles with the fact that she cannot involve those closest to her, primarily her former handmaidens. But at the insistence of R2, Padme reaches out to Yane for her help incorporating special cloth passed down through her family into her veil for the wedding. Though Yane is shocked to hear that her friend and former queen needs wedding attire, she quickly whips up a custom dress for the occasion. Though Amidala's reign on Naboo is over, their legislature remains busy, now under the watchful eye of Sashe. The legislators are taken by surprise when Korsh Panaka approaches them with an old bill he hopes will keep Naboo safe during the inevitable hardships of war. In exchange for Naboo providing startup funds to colonists many years ago, the bill necessitates that all other planets in the Chamal sector provide resources to Naboo if it were to find itself in a state of emergency. With the Clone Wars ramping up, Panaka lobbies to use this bill to strengthen Naboo. Sashe argues it will be struck down and that all planets should work together equally. The legislators are split, and it's decided that a meeting must be held with all the leaders in the planets of the Chamal sector. Sashe is to be the representative for Naboo. Sabe and Tanra have returned to Tatooine under new and fake identities, but with a very familiar mission to free the enslaved. As Padme and Anakin make final preparations for the wedding, Queen Jamilia visits the lake house and requests Padme's help in rescuing a group of Naboo artists who are stuck behind separatist lines on the planet New Royo. True to form, Padme agrees to the mission and recruits Anakin to help. No sooner than arriving on New Royo, Padme and Anakin sense that something is off. They locate an artist commune and meet Carl, one of the aforementioned Naboo, who claim that the artists don't want to leave New Royo despite the dangers of the separatists. He suddenly recognizes Padme as the former Queen Amidala and urges her to leave immediately. Newt Gunray is reportedly on the planet and would love nothing more than another chance to take her life. Before leaving, Padme urges Carl to pass on their offer of safe passage to the rest of the artists. Only one agrees to go, a young girl named Antria, who Padme recognizes as Queen Jamilia's sister, bringing sudden clarity to Jamilia's involvement. They narrowly escape, and Padme returns Antria to Jamilia. Shortly afterwards, in a modest ceremony by the water, Padme and Anakin are married. Back on Coruscant, Yoda tells Bail Organa about a resupply company that has been brought to his attention. The organization has demanded all communications with the Republic go through a senator rather than a Jedi and have requested a private meeting. Bail agrees to look into it, but is already overwhelmed with trying to navigate the Senate in the wake of the Chancellor's newly granted emergency powers. Sabe and Tanra manage to assimilate to Tatooine society and actually begin to enjoy their lives there. Despite many difficulties, they establish a foothold as a trusted source to transport people off-world. Though it's never directly stated and they don't know exactly who they're working for, the passengers always bear the signs of prior enslavement. Padme returns to Coruscant, eager to get back to work. She's immediately briefed by Bail and Mon Mothma about the mission from Yoda. They want to lend their assistance but can't afford to leave the Senate. They lament over the fact that they can't be in two places at once, which gives Padme an idea. She urgently contacts Sabe and requests her help with the mission. Sabe is pained to be called away from Naboo, but asserts that she will do anything for Padme and leaves immediately. Tanra is left behind to continue their work. Upon Sabe's arrival on Coruscant, Padme gives her the full details of the mission. Ever since the Clone Wars started, companies have been taking advantage of galactic destabilization by selling resources to both the Republic and the Separatists. Padme's Senate faction wants to unmask these companies so the Republic can avoid them. 
One company in particular has asked to meet with a senator, and Padme plans to make contact while Sabe takes her place in the Senate. Despite the many years since she last played the role, Sabe takes on the guise of Amidala and begins to successfully work in the Senate. Meanwhile, Padme and Captain Typho disguise themselves as bodyguards and report for an assignment aboard a Wookiee ship called the Namrelu that works for the company in question. They are to escort the ship to Hebecker Minor, where they will deliver supplies to a Republic squad in need. Padme quickly befriends the crew, including the Wookiee captain, a protocol droid named Ify, and the Mris mechanic Ida. On Tatooine, Tanra continues transporting slaves to freedom. During an arranged pickup in the desert, he's approached by a shadowy figure who claims to work for a group called the White Sons. After some questioning, Tanra is given a chip deactivator used to shut down control chips implanted in the slaves and is asked to make improvements on it. He quickly reaches out to Rabe for assistance. On Carlinus, Sasha is informed by Governor Kelma about changes on her planet since the war started. Their tea export has increased exponentially and their workforce has grown considerably. Kelma suspects the majority of the workforce are freed slaves. Sashe goes out to the fields to interview the workers about their experiences and is able to piece together a pattern to the planets the slaves came from. All are in the Outer Rim, and all are places the war has touched. Sashe alerts both Sabe and Padme. On Coruscant, Sabe attends a party thrown by Bail Organa. She has a conversation with Palpatine, who seems to suspect something is amiss. She then returns home, but hears someone sneaking into the apartment. None other than Anakin Skywalker appears in her bedroom. He immediately recognizes Padme is missing and demands answers. Sabe explains, but in the process comes to the realization that Anakin is Padme's lover. She's so devastated that Padme would keep such a secret from her. Padme and Typho arrive at Hebecker Minor and take a shuttle to deliver the supplies to a group of clones. However, Padme learns that the local magistrate's family has been kidnapped by the Separatists. She recruits Typho and some of the clones, boards her shuttle, and contacts the Separatists, claiming to be a non-aligned party, offering supplies that the Republic didn't buy. They are given permission to land in a Separatist camp, where they immediately leap into action and save the Magistrate's family. After their successful mission, Padme returns to the Namrelu, where Ify asks her to follow him to meet someone. He leads her to a secret room on the ship, where a hologram of a Namoidian named OJ Nadib is waiting. Padme is suspicious of him until he explains that he was behind the relief mission to Hebecker Minor, as well as many others. He and a group of Namoidians who had no part in the occupation of Naboo have been running supply lines separate from the treachery of the Trade Federation. They need to secretly contact a senator because their goal is to replace Lot Dodd as a representative in the Senate. Padme realizes that, despite her prejudices towards the Nemoidians, the plan could bring significant positive change to the galaxy. Sabe attends a meeting with the Jedi at the temple. She's pulled aside by Anakin, who offers an apology for their first meeting, but based on his comments, Sabe realizes that he and Padme are not just lovers, but husband and wife. She is once again deeply hurt. Palpatine, who's also at the meeting, doesn't fail to notice. On Carlinus, Sashe successfully alters the bill and unites the leaders of the Chamal sector. She's contacted by Padme and they piece together their two sides of the story. They realize that OJ Nadib was responsible for sending freed slaves to Carlinus and buying their tea in an effort to get in Padme's good graces, all the while hoping she would be the senator who was sent to contact him. Padme decides she will approach her faction about the Nemoidians' cause. Padme rushes back to Coruscant to meet with Bail Organa and Mon Mothma. She's surprised to find Palpatine is also there. After he pieced together that Sabe was a body double, he wanted to hear about Padme's mission as well. Padme reveals what she discovered regarding the Trade Federation. Bail, Organa, and Mon Mothma are excited by the opportunity and plan to pursue it. Palpatine, on the other hand, is infuriated, but hides it well and retreats to his office to plot his next steps. Sabe confronts Padme about her secret marriage, and they have their first truly open and honest conversation in years. Though they are able to reconcile their differences, Sabe declares that this was the last time that she will play the role of a handmaiden. Padme is saddened, but understands, and the pair spend one last night of friendship together, just as they did when they were young girls. Sabe returns to Tatooine, where Tanra is excited to show her the chip deactivator that Rabi successfully improved. It's now fully functional and freeing more slaves than ever before. The two plan to contact the White Sons and continue their work. Back on Coruscant, with the war ramping up and their future unsure, Anakin and Padme spend a quiet moment together, 
not as senator and Jedi, but as husband and wife. In the face of so much uncertainty, they find hope in the fact that they will face whatever comes together. That'll do it for today's video. I hope you've enjoyed our recap of what happened in Queen's Hope by E.K. Johnston, and we also hope you found it helpful. If you'd like to watch the Roundtable episodes on this book, check out the links in the description for episodes 161 and 162 of the Living Force podcast, which you can catch live every Monday night at 8 p.m. Eastern at youtube.com slash utini or on your favorite podcatchers. Also, check out the link to our review by Eric Eilerson, also in the description. Visit us online at utini.com for reviews, articles, timelines, and book profiles for every single story in the Star Wars galaxy. If you'd like to help us out more directly, check out our Patreon page at patreon.com utini. Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, may the Force be with you.